Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the super pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We are post uh, Breeders' Cup, my friend, and it was an interesting Breeders' Cup. You know, I think that the uh, main surprise was that there were not many surprises. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, big horses showed up. Uh, you know, it was it was easy to pick a lot of winners, I think, in this Breeders' Cup. But the key was getting a, a few long shots sprinkled in, and uh, that was uh, that was easier said than done. Without further ado, Matt, what we're going to do today is we're going to go over all fourteen races. We're going to recap the Breeders' Cup. We're going to discuss a little bit, and we're going to start with the classic. And for my money, Matt, the best dirt horse in America won the classic. White of Barrio, Rick Dutcho Jr., Irad Ortiz Jr. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with what uh, Rick Dutcho said off after the race. He said that he thought his horse looked like a winner every step of the way. And I completely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. But both of us had him as the top pick, so it's no surprise. I actually had him at the top pick before Archangelo and Go Rocket Ride. I thought if he ran or race similar to the Whitney, he would win this. I think he did. I thought he looked like a winner the whole way. He just looks like a more focused horse since moving to the barn of Rick Dutcho Jr. This is a nice horse. As a three-year-old, he won the Holy Bowl in the Florida Derby uh, a year and a half ago or more. Don't forget. But then he kind of sputtered uh, with Sappy Joseph, Sappy Joseph Jr. Uh, for a while. Came into Rick Dutcho's barn this spring. Ran a pretty good race in the Met Mile. But as Whitney... And his Breeders' Cup Classic proved he's the best, at least, distance dirt horse in the country. And and again, I would argue that he's the best. Retribution for Rick Dutro Jr. Say what you want about Babe, Rick Dutro Jr. But uh, after a 10-year suspension, he came back and he he got a horse and he, and he won the Breeders' Cup Classic for the second time. For the second time, absolutely. And... Uh... Uh, I think the uh, the connections are pretty much set on White Barrier returning last year. I I saw that they are planning a four race campaign next year with the Saudi Cup, the Dubai World Cup, and then the same path as last year, the Whitney and the Classic. Well, those are four big races, but it also means we won't see them until August of 2024. Uh, White Barrio, uh, a deserving winner. Of the Breeders' Cup Classic, Derma Sodagaki. I, I wasn't going to bet a horse coming out of his first race since the Kentucky Derby, but he ran big to be second. Proxy wasn't a surprise. We, I think, we both probably had him uh, filling out the exotics, and he he finished well. But uh, this was White of Barrio. I think a clear winner. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, and and I guess you know you expect Proxy to show up. He showed up. I don't know if too many others showed up in the race though. Yeah, there were some disappointments for sure, uh, but uh, White Barrio, yeah, let's see. Uh, he could carry him to Horse of the Year, Matt, but I'm I'm going to show you the next uh, winner here on our 14 races, and come on there. It's not switching for me. Let's get that. There you go. There it is. All right, the distaff. Idiomatic, and let's start our horse of the year before we talk about the distaff a little bit. Let's talk uh, talk about our horse of the year discussion. I really do think uh, up to the mark. By the way, had an excellent year on the grass and ran an excellent race in the Breeders' Cup turf. He could be the best horse in America, but I think the horse of the year, Matt, is down to three horses. Uh, no offense to Elite Power, who you could put in as the fourth horse, but I, I don't think the sprinter's going to get it. So I think it's between White of Barrio, Idiomatic, and uh, Cody's Wish. And Idiomatic, if you if you just go by the record, eight of nine with a second. The second was at one turn. Uh, a bunch of grade, graded stakes in a row, the last three being grade one. Um, maybe not overly impressive in the distaff, but she she got it done. Yeah, absolutely. Idiomatic deserves to uh, be a finalist in the horse of the year voting. Um, 
she won the biggest race of the year for fillies and mares in the distaff. She beat a really good field in the distaff. Um, but, you know, we've got two horses in the male divisions, which tend to be the ones that win, that also had pretty good years. Yeah, it's it's hard for me to uh, to make a choice right now between the three. I think White Barrio is the best dirt horse. I said it, but the Whitney and the Breeders' Cup Classic, other than the Alliance win, that's all he's got. Idiomatic, eight, as I said, eight and nine. Terrific year. Uh, she really got good the second half of the year. And then Cody's Wish uh, split decisions with White Barrio, but had a better overall record this year, although I think White Barrio more impressive. As for the distaff, Idiomatic was game. Clarier had a shot at her, randomized, would not go away. Uh, uh, then the long shot on the outside uh, came running, but Idiomatic would not let anybody buy uh, a, a crowning win for her in a, in a great season. Yeah, and you mentioned randomized, uh, Brian, who with that second per, second place performance, an impressive second place per, performance behind a horse like Idiomatic, now makes the uh, decision about the top three-year-old filly much more interesting, which I think before this race was a pretty solid lock for pretty mischievous. I don't know if that's true any longer. Yeah, it might not be true. I, I would still side with pretty mischievous for her entire year, but the, you got the Alabama, you got the Bell Dam, you got a very good second in the Breeders' Cup to stop for randomized for trainer Chad Brown. By the way, idiomatic curlin. Curlin just keeps getting it done. Uh, our top pick in the race was a different Curlin. Uh, Clarier, once again, Matt, close, but no cigar in the Breeders' Cup this time. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, um, as the best horse won this race. I'm not sure if uh, Clarier had gotten a clean trip. She had to hesitate behind traffic a little bit uh along the rail, down the stretch, if it would have made any difference. Yeah, this is the first time in her career where I finally am ready to say, well, maybe she is better at a mile 16th than a mile and eighth, but I've never seen a horse in the Breeders' Cup that come close uh, three straight years without winning one, as Clarier did in the distaff. Idiomatic, a deserving winner. Let's move on to the next one, Matt. I think we're going to go turf. Popped up right away this time. August Rodin, I had him as my top pick earlier. I went with a longer shot later. But August Rodin uh, was best in this race. Aiden O'Brien, big Breeders' Cup, as expected. Ryan Moore, one of the top European jockeys for, for years now. This is a really good three-year-old winning his fourth group grade one race of the year. Absolutely is, Brian. And, and he deserved that victory the way that he ran. Um, I had been a supporter of Mustadaf. Um, uh, I think that one left his race uh, uh, before they started. He was uh, 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 really revved up and fractious uh, in the paddock, warming up before the gate. So I, I think he left his race before it started. And I, I, I'm going to say the best horse won, August Rodin, especially at that distance at 12 furlongs. And I'm going to say that the second place finisher up to the mark was really good down the stretch. He he fought all the way to the wire up to the mark. Uh, I think he did enough to be our male turf champion. I don't think August Rodin or Master of the Seas can take that championship away from up to the mark as, as well as up to the mark ran on Saturday. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and August Rodin, another one of the favorites that won uh, and the Breeders' Cup over the weekend, Brian. It was nine, nine favorites out of 14 races. And, and even the races that weren't won by favorites, two of them were three to one, a seven to one, a nine to one. The longest shot was 16 to one. And, and so even, even the non-favorites were not big bombs like we've seen in the breeders cup in other years yeah yeah i was looking for a big bomb somewhere matt but we didn't get it uh a lot of these horses like the, the first three we talked about were not heavy odds on favorites white barrio august Rodin, and uh idiomatic i thought idiomatic might be lower she wasn't uh white barrio i was a little surprised he was the favorite over arabian night august Rodin was uh barely the favorite in the turf so uh 
yeah, big horses showed up. Uh, good fields, good finishes. Let's move on. The next one on our list. Well, here's here's a clear favorite, uh, Elite Power. I, I know some people thought he might lose this after losing his last race, but uh, I, I just think this race set up for him well. We both thought it would. Uh, they ran reasonable fractions in the Breeders' Cup Sprint, and you could just see Elite Power winding up and rolling down the lane. Absolutely. Uh, for Bill Mott and Irad Ortiz Jr., both of them won three races on the Breeders' Cup weekend. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think I mentioned it a couple shows ago that, you know, Bill Mott uh, might become a big contender for the Trainer of the Year award. And, and I think he did that in uh, in the Breeders' Cup with these three wins. He's got an uncanny way. And, of course, going back to uh, the ultimate uh, big a Bill Mott horse that won a lot of races in a row uh, with Cigar. He, he, Bill Mott has, has quite a knack of horses that can put together a lot of races and, and with elite power and, and Cody's wish, you, you've got a couple of horses that had streaks and except for a loss here and there could have big numbers in their streaks. Yeah, I, I'm all for Big Mod as the trainer of the year and and couldn't happen to a nicer guy winning three Breeders' Cup races, as you say here. Bill Mott's a true gentleman, a class act who's been around a long time. Uh, I, I was a big Bill Mott fan before Cigar came around. Uh, as far as Lee Power, I think he's been the best dirt sprinter uh, in the world the last two years, and he showed it here. Uh, again, he finally lost a race in the race preceding this Breeders' Cup sprint. But he proved best here. He got his second straight Breeders' Cup win, Matt. And that's going to start a little trend for us now where we can talk about repeat winners. Four horses came to the Breeders' Cup with a chance to win a second straight Breeders' Cup. And three of the four did it. Uh, Elite Power, of course, did it. And there is Cody's Wish. Cody's Wish, see that same trainer again, Bill Mott Jr. Alvarado also had a big uh, Breeders' Cup. Uh, Cody's Wish is uh, a two-time winner now of the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Neither one of them were easy, Matt. No, they weren't. This one was, I guess, was kind of similar to uh, to last year. He he needed everything he had to get the win. Uh, Cody's Wish when he ran down uh, National Treasure, which was one of the few uh, Bob Baffert horses that ran well. Yeah, National Treasure, the Preakness winner, ran a very very good race in here. And Cody's wish, uh, the two horses kind of exchanged going out, going in a little bit in the stretch. There was uh, an objection to Stewart's inquiry in the race, but I, it never looked like Cody's wish should come down. Cody's wish wins his second straight Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. I don't know that it's enough to win the Horse of the Year, uh, but that Met Mile win, uh, uh, grade one at Churchill Downs. Cody's wish had another really good year for trainer Bill Mott. And uh, of course, there's the sentimental part of Cody's wish as well, and that that I don't know if that'll play a part in, in the horse of the year voting. I think he'll be. I think it will probably help him get a couple more votes than he would have. But but I agree. Uh, uh, I love Cody's wish. The last two years, he and what Bill Mott has been able to do with him. Uh, kudos to uh, uh, Cody's wish. But you know, I I, I think. Uh, White Abario is going to have the edge. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. White Abario, uh, it, all three of them, you know, I, I wouldn't have a problem with any of the three being voted Horse of the Year. Cody's Wish is in the race. Cody's Wish, a repeat winner, as is this next one, Matt. And uh, there was no doubt in the Philly and Mare Sprint. Good night, Olive. Also, like Elite Power, coming off a loss at Saratoga. Uh, forget about that now. Seven furlongs, clearly is a distance she loves and uh, everything went right for good night olive in this race and i think you could tell that she was going to be a winner probably pretty soon after the starting gate opened in the philly and mare sprint yeah talk about winning a lot of races in a row uh, uh good night olive's only loss came to uh, echo zulu who who uh was having such a fantastic year uh, uh this year but uh Another Breeders' Cup win for Chad Brown uh, and Irad here. Uh, Chad had two more 
uh, Breeders' Cup victories uh, uh, this year, and he has piled up an awful, awful lot of those uh, Breeders' Cup wins in a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, Chad Brown certainly uh, has won more Breeders' Cup races in the last decade or so uh, than any other American trainer. Good night, Olive. Uh, yeah, she actually lost twice this year. Remember, she got bottled up at Churchill Downs and got beat. Yeah. So uh, there is a uh, there is a question about uh, Echo Zulu still. Uh, Echo Zulu, of course, had a major injury before the Breeders' Cup. Whether she could be uh, the Philly and Mare, uh female sprint champion. But uh, good night, Olive, with this performance might have surpassed uh, Echo Zulu, who beat her at Saratoga in the Ball Arena. Three straight repeat winners, Matt. Of course, Caravelle, we're going to talk about the uh, Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint in a minute. Caravelle was the only one coming back that didn't uh, get the job done. But uh, three straight repeat wins, that's not easy. Elite Power, Cody's Wish, and Goodnight Olive. Next on our list, Matt, is the Philly and Mare Turf. People will argue with me, but uh, from, from, from in my opinion, this was the best Breeders' Cup performance out of anybody. Um, not a surprise. I mean, she's been a great mare. She's been a champion in Europe, an absolutely uh, uh, spectacular female miler. But she had never been farther, this daughter of Frankel, than one mile in 12 career races. All of a sudden, they jump her up to a mile and a quarter. And horses don't come from ninth at the stretch call and win mile and a quarter races, Matt. It just doesn't happen unless there's a complete pace collapse. There wasn't a complete complete uh, pace collapse in this way. Warm Heart was running really well the last quarter mile. And in, sp in spiral still inhaled her down the stretch. John Gosden, we've seen him for as long as they've been running the Breeders' Cup. And Frankie Torrey, it seems like almost as long. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, and as you mentioned, in Spiral uh, has has been a very good horse for a long time. She's a she's a two time champion in Europe as a two year old and as a three year old has nine career wins and six of them are in Group One races. Uh, 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 that's something else. Uh, John Gosden's sixth Breeders' Cup win. Frankie Dettori's fifteenth Breeders' Cup win. I guess if you want to be generous, you could say that the Tory was the only California based jockey to win a Breeders' Cup race. If you want to call Frankie at this point a California based rider. I, I, I didn't even think of that, Matt. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, he's he's back in California now, but uh, the, the Italian, I, I certainly don't think of him as a California rider, but California based, at least for now. Yeah, Frankie to Tori. He did his Tatori leap there in the winter circle, and I was just watching replays of this uh, just overwhelming stretch run. And uh, good news, like uh, White Barrio in Spiral, we'll be back next year. And Gosden says, yeah, why not? Uh, she's going good. We'll bring her back to Del Mar for the Breeders' Cup, and we'll see what race that's in next year as well. But uh, for my money, the best of all the Breeders' Cup horses. Next, Matt, we're getting there. And, and people might say, what about Matt? Master of the Seas, Brian? Master of the Seas had a similar type of clothes. I, I just think the difference between running down Warm Heart out a mile and a quarter for me as fast as they were running was me even more impressive. But Master of the Seas coming from a far outside post and also flying late to get up and win over another good European. Yep, and, and another great European trainer in Charlie Appleby, picked up uh, his 10th Breeders' Cup. And Brian, I think it was his third win in the mile in a row for uh, for Charlie Appleby. I tell you what, I learned one thing, and, and come this time next year, Brian, I want you to make sure you remind me of this. Uh, I, I did not use Master of Seas. I didn't like that far outside post. But you know what, Brian? Master of Seas is not the only horse to have won from the far outside uh, in the mile in past years. There have been three or four of them. Yeah. Now, I, I don't like a mile at Santa Anita. I don't like that outside post. And, and I think he did have to overcome a little disadvantage to do it. So Master of the Seas, who once uh, lost the guineas over there, the big uh, uh, classic uh, at in, in England, uh, by a nose. Uh, now he's got his big one. Uh, really three good 
very good North American efforts in the row and Appleby and Buick, we see them year after year rating big American turf races. Matt, the final race we're going to talk about on Saturday is the Breeders' Cup turf spin. And, and this was a winner who had some odds, but unfortunately, I didn't like him. In fact, Matt, I'm going to go as far as to say I didn't think this horse had the balls to win the Breeders' Cup. Oh, I apologize, everyone. No balls. No balls. No balls. No balls won the Breeders' Cup turf sprint, and he uh, he had some odds. He did. He was 12 to 1. You know, in the lead in, I said uh, there weren't many surprises. This was this was one of the surprises, in, not just in the 12 to 1 odds for this horse, but in that it was a first time Breeders' Cup win for the trainer, Larry Ravelli, and First-time Breeders' Cup win for the jockey, Gerardo Corrales. Yeah, nice to see uh, uh, new newbies, if you will, win uh, their first Breeders' Cup. Uh, wide open race. He, he was not in my top eight, honestly, in the race. But I am very happy for Larry Ravelli, Matt. And Larry Ravelli is, of course, a trainer I've known for a while uh, uh, up there in the Chicagoland area. My favorite horse. You ready for this, Matt? My favorite horse of 2023 was trained by Larry Ravelli. And of course, we didn't get to see two fills basically the second half of the year. So I'm happy for Larry Ravelli getting a Breeders' Cup win with no balls. All right, Matt, let's go back to Friday for the two-year-olds. Fierceness. Uh, I, I listed him as a contender, but I, I couldn't bet him. I couldn't bet him after that. You know, he, he got off to not a good start. It was a sloppy track in the Champagne, and he just ran awful. And that was only his second career race. I couldn't bet him in this Breeders' Cup juvenile. But Fierceness, he was much the best on Friday. Wow, he certainly was, Brian. And I know in our uh, picks show, we talked about that. I talked about the fact that, you know, the Champagne Stakes was starting to look like a race that horses were coming out running from. And... Regrettably, that led me to Timberlake uh, instead of fierceness, but it was fierceness. Wow, what a performance. One of the best performances in a juvenile uh, uh, in many, many years. Uh, um, it was a reunion of sorts between trainer Todd Pletcher, owner, breeder, Mike Rapoli, and for Johnny V, John Velasquez. They were together uh, when Uncle Mo uh, won the Breeders' Cup for uh, for all three of them. And Fierceness was uh, a homebred for Mike Rapoli. Uh, the mare he bred. The mare was out of Stay Thirsty, one of Rapoli's uh, top horses. And I guess you got to give credit to the connections, to Todd for sticking with uh uh, fierceness after that stinky performance in the champagne. Yeah, and let's not forget, Matt, fierceness was uh, what we said was the most impressive maiden winner of all when he won at Saratoga uh, during the summer. That uh, debut performance was huge for fierceness, and, and here he is showing up in a big way, stalking the pace, taking over, and just, I was looking for other horses. Locked, his, his stable mate came running and just missed second, in fact, but Fierceness was just way out in front. And Matt, if you compare the times, I'm not always big on times, but if you compare the times between the juvenile, Fierceness big win in the juvenile to the juvenile Phillies final time of just FYI, uh, they're not comparable because it was almost three full seconds faster Fierceness ran than j j just FYI did. Yes, absolutely. There were a lot of superlatives that you could use to describe that performance of fierceness. Here's just a FYI, and, and let's give you credit because I didn't have a seven to one winner at the Breeders' Cup. You did, you had her as the top pick. Uh, unfortunately, Beholder's Daughter Tomorrow, the favorite uh, it was, was injured in the race or injured during the race and backed out, but just FYI, deserving winner. She looked good the whole way and uh, she was able to uh, be resolute Late, other Phillies were coming to her, but just FYI, undefeated, three different tracks, two grade ones, Bill Mott, Jr. Alvarado again. Yep, more Bill Mott, uh, Jr. Uh, 
Alvarado showing, uh, uh, you know, Bill Mott's versatility uh, uh, with uh, uh, with two year olds, older horses, et cetera. Junior Alvarado, second Breeders' Cup win in a year and the third of his career. Yeah, yeah, nice uh, Breeders' Cup for Junior Alvarado, uh, another rider that we've liked for a long time. Matt, just FYI, as I said, undefeated. She's also a daughter of Justify. And Justify had a big Friday, of course, we're going to talk about a little bit more. Oh, by the way, tomorrow's injury is not uh, 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 supposed to be too severe, and we'll expect her back next year. But just FYI, ran her way, like Fierceness, to an Eclipse Award here at the Breeders' Cup. Let's go to the turf on Friday, Matt. We got the Juvenile Turf next. Uh, you know, I knew Aiden O'Brien was coming with a strong hand. This was not a horse that uh, looked like one of his strongest runners. However, when the stable mate was scratched, uh, just unquestionable became an obvious horse, uh, an obvious contender, that is, in the juvenile turf. And he got the job done for, again, Aiden O'Brien, Ryan Moore. Yep. And uh, uh, the certainly the betting public got it right because this is a, was another one of those favorites. Yeah, unquestionable was one out of five only in Europe, but he had been running – uh, good races over there. Uh, not not one of the monsters though that we've seen come over uh, a few times. Not uh, doesn't impress me as much as modern games, uh, for instance, uh, from a couple of years ago. But unquestionable was the best in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. As was there's another daughter of Justify winning the Breeders' Cup. Matt, hard to justify, and another undefeated two-year-old filly out of Justify winning the Breeders' Cup. Yes, absolutely, Brian. And another another victory for Chad Brown uh, in this juvenile Phillies turf race. I think that Chad has won this race uh, six times. It was not uh, uh, it was not a rad riding here. It was Flavian Pratt. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, another uh, uh, another one. Chad is is hard to overlook. Uh, in this race yeah like just what just fyi hard to justify is one of three different turf courses now uh saratoga aqueduct and now uh, now out at santa anita and uh, i thought she was best in fact i would i would venture my opinion would be that she was more impressive to me winning this than actually just fyi in the in the breeders cup juvenile phillies Maybe I'm splitting hairs, but uh, hard to justify was good here in a good field, and uh, she was best. So good for the uh, sire justify. I believe justify is a cool more, isn't he, Matt? We should mention that. Uh, I, th I think yeah, that's correct. Yes, the triple crown winner, the undefeated triple crown winner, the only triple crown winner ever to retire undefeated. Seattle Slough also was an undefeated triple crown winner, but he didn't retire undefeated. Justify did. Now he's got two Breeders' Cup, two-year-old Philly Breeders' Cup winners uh, this year after just FYI and hard to justify. Last but not least, Matt, uh, I tried to tell you that this horse was a monster. Big Evs, um, uh, Mick Appleby, not Charlie Appleby, but Mick Appleby. Uh, this, this horse had been so dominant against two-year-olds recently in Europe. Uh, like I said, his only loss was to the best older sprinters in Europe recently. And uh, he was best here in the juvenile turf sprint. 55 and change, just like no balls, big abs, best in the juvenile turf sprint. Yeah, that was that, that was a fast time. And, and I think it was uh, particularly noteworthy what you mentioned in our uh, uh, pick show that uh, this was a two-year-old running against older horses in Europe, something that we wouldn't even think about doing here in Big, big ebbs, right. We wouldn't think about doing it over here, and big ebbs is uh, golden pal-esque, if you will. Uh, he, he, he's just got a big-time engine to run fast early, and I'm sure we'll see more of big ebbs uh, in the coming years for trainer Mick Appleby. All right, Matt, that's 14 Breeders' Cup races recapped. Uh, came out a little behind cash tickets. They were small tickets, unfortunately. Came out a little behind. Uh, I hope our, some of our, uh, or I hope a lot of our audience did did even better. Uh, chalky, 
I always like some long shots mixed in there, but still an enjoyable Breeders' Cup. Lots of good finishes. And, and it, once again, lots of big horses showing up. Let me get a parting shot from you before we go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it was an interesting uh, Breeders' Cup. Uh, yeah, and, you know, you, you, you try and get some prices in there to hit that trifecta or to hit that uh, 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 pick four. But uh, it was it was tough to come up with uh, the big prices on this Breeders' Cup weekend. We've got... Uh, Shows coming up. We've still got some uh, grade one races and we've got the end of the year awards to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, always a lot to look forward to in this sport, Matt. Uh, every week of the year. In fact, I think we're I think we're going to start talking about uh, the Kentucky Derby uh contenders uh, in the very near future. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel here at Horse Racing Nation on YouTube. Go ahead and do that. Turn on notifications. Matt and I sure enjoy uh, hosting you all every week here at Horse Center. Uh, we'll be back next week with another big show. Until then, good luck at the races. We'll see you soon.